Hi there, and welcome to Carol's Kitchen GT, the show. Today we are in my kitchen, and we are going to make some Guyanese beef patties and chicken patties as well. I'll take you through the process. I'll give you some little ex explanations as to how I do it. But like I can always tell you, um, when you're in your kitchen, there's no rules. It's your, your rules, you do it your way. I'm in my kitchen, so I'm gonna do it my way. Uh, before we go further, I'd just like to thank our sponsors, Sterling Products. Today I'll be using two of their um, products, which is Golden Cream Margarine and Baker's Pride Lard or Shortening, which um, I'm going to incorporate with flour to make the pastry dough. And of course, I'm making beef patties and chicken patties. Also, I'd like to thank GTT. Stay tuned. What are you doing? Big Lou ice cream. You know it's good. Welcome back. So what we have here is the filling for the beef patty. I used um, minced beef. I have just some corn and carrots and of course shallots and seasonings and um, a bit of salt and you fry it up really nice. In this pot, I have the chicken filling, which um, I do a little bit different. It's the same vegetable ingredients with the corn and carrots and then with the chicken as well. Um, when you finish frying it up, it's kind of white and it doesn't look really appealing. So what I do, I use um, one of those colored cubes to give it um, some taste. And I also put a bit of sugar because I find like the sugar brings out the flavor of the chicken a little bit more. And of course, the regular stuff like shallots, um, a bit of green seasoning, some garlic. So this is what the dough looks like. If you notice, it's pretty stiff because it's cool. It's really, really cool because I had it in the refrigerator for like two hours. When you roll your dough, remember it's up to you um, how thick you want the dough. But my recommendation would be to roll the dough as thin as possible because remember pastry is supposed to be something light. It's supposed to just be a light snack and you don't want it too thick because sometimes it wouldn't bake, especially um, in the inside where the filling is. So I'm using this cutter. Um, I'm going to use this curly side and you try to get all the little pieces that you can get in because you don't want to keep rolling like I said earlier. So what happens here, two pieces would make one patty and this is my way of making it. Some people use a patty tin or a cupcake tin and they form their, their, their the bottom of the patty in, in it first and then they just um, put on the top and you, you try to get a small spoon because if you get a large spoon then you put yourself in problems and you overstuff the patty and then it gives you a hard time to close like what I'm doing right now so this is just the amount you want you don't want a lot because again while it's baking if it doesn't close properly it, it raise up the beef would fall out it would be a mess and it doesn't look pretty either so I'm just gonna go around like this in a circle and pinch it. Pinch the two sides of the dough together, like this. And if you notice, it's all sealed. And then you take a fork, and then you just give it some nice little, little nicks like this, so you get a nice little design. And then this helps to seal it as well. But I don't have a, a large cutter, so I'm just improvising and using a cookie tin. This would be the right size for what I want to do, and you'll see what I'm doing shortly. So we're just going around again. But this is the, you see how big this is? So this is what I'm gonna just put the chicken here, spread it across like this on one side. And with the beef patty, it just took two spoons of the filling. This one takes four. And then you just fold it over. It's very, very easy. And you go around like this. 
be doing the same thing again with the fork. So what I have here is some egg wash and we have the two, the beef patty, the chicken patty all laid out in the pan. I butter the pan a little bit uh, before I put the pastry in because I don't want it to stick. And then I'm just going to base it. And I put a little bit of coloring in the egg as well because the egg ain't yellow enough or wouldn't have enough color. What I do as well, I sprinkle a little bit of sugar because what that does is make the pastry nice and brown. The oven has already been preheated as well and it's been to 250 degrees for the past 15 minutes. It's here! Igloo Ice Cream Fruit Bars. Four mouth-watering flavors. Mango, pineapple, strawberry, and soursop. A beautiful combination of real fruit and igloo ice cream. Go old school with fluty popsicle. Classic flavors and refreshing goodness. Available at igloo outlets and all your favorite shops. Welcome back. So I have in my hand here um, some of the chicken patties that we made. Like I said, this is the shape. It's really, really hot. They're just out of the oven. And then now I have the beef patties, which is the wrong ones. As you can see, they're nice golden brown, very crispy, very hot. Like I said, I really want to taste one, but I need a cold drink before I do that because I've been baking and we've been all over the place this, this afternoon in the kitchen. It's a really, really hot day. Remember people, hydrate and if you're going to buy something to cool yourself down, remember to, to, when you go to the groceries, support local or even stop at the Igloo ice cream outlet at uh, Providence and get yourself a sweet treat. There is something for everybody at Igloo. There's um, the non-dairy products, which um, is for lactose intolerance persons. There's the sugar-free ice cream. There's popsicles, there's fudgicles. You can get soft serve ice cream in a cone cup. You can get it in a waffle cup, or you can get a tub to go. So thank you to Sterling Products once again, and thank you so much to GTT as well. See you next time.